Hi, my name is Michael, and as you see, we're in the dark room today. The UPB 1A spiral developing spiral has a uh, circle on the bottom as a hole. It's flat, like somebody cut it off. So that does not work in my divot in the table, so I took a measuring spoon, turned it upside down over the divot, and taped it down. And then I put the circle on top of the spoon, and it stays there in one place, and I can spin it. If I'm careful, it won't jump off of that, but it stays in one place and it spins nicely. I've loaded this reel, I've loaded these spirals twice now, perfectly, all the way out to the outside, all the way to the end, and none of the film touched itself. It worked beautifully. So. First time I did it, it jumped off a couple times, and I had to reposition it. But the second time, it stayed on the whole time. Now I hold the film reel in my hand like that, and I hold it down here. I feel the edge of the table so that the film goes just above the table and doesn't scrape, and goes straight in on a flat angle. So. Not standing up, but flat, turned 90 degrees from loading. That's worked great. This is my Word Perfect document. A negative from each scene was put into a table, and then information about the exposure and other things put beside it. So I discovered that my theme is houses in the neighborhood. Headshots are not part of that theme, nor are close-ups of plants. The slate identifies the film, but in this case, it didn't make it. But that shot did, and that's part of the theme. So those other things are going to be cut out of the negative before I make a new print. There were 14 shots. So the slate the headshot and the two plants, so there's ten shots left in the negative. And one of them wasn't exposed properly, so now we're down to nine. So this one with the sun shining behind the buildings, it was a wrong angle. That's got to go. So I'm, I'm down to nine shots on this negative to try to print it. My main goal is to look at a negative and know what voltage to print it at and how long hot concentrated developer to use to make the leader black. We're going to get after printing this negative again. I printed it once and the headshot turned out really nice. If you remember from the negative, it's very dark. This was printed at 2 volts. So today, I'm going to get after the negative that was shot on the Model BB camera. <clears throat> and I'm going to remove that headshot, going to remove the slate, going to remove the two plants. Why, you say? This is the print that I made at 2 volts, and look at that. That's so dark you can almost not see the fuzz plant. Anyway, the fuzz plant doesn't fill the frame up enough to make it interesting. So they've got to go. There were 14 shots. I printed all of them as is. And after viewing the inversion and the print, I decided to remove uh, all but nine. That street shot has to go 
where the sun is bleeding out from behind the buildings. Now I'm going to get rid of some of them but I'm going to keep the headshot separate with this as a sample because if I ever get an egg that looks like that again I'll know how to print it. This is the first shot and as you can see it's way too dark. This scene comes out a lot better in another way. I could, I think this would print much better with less light and less developing. Here's the print of the slate, but I don't want to print this again. All right, this negative is going to be cut now and trimmed down four or five shots. Here's the slate. This is the clear leader. As you can see, there's like no fog. There's only a little bit of pink. So I'm going to keep this leader and attach it further in past these shots that I'm removing because I want to print through the clear leader and see the density of my developing. So the leader was cut off of the slate shot. The slate shot was cut off of the first shot looking left off the back porch. Now I will reattach the leader to the shot looking left off the back porch. Now I'm using a big old clunky Hollywood Film Company splicer. That's what it looks like. It's a tape splicer. I'm using rather narrow tape right now. It only punches holes along the bottom where the pins are. Even though there's holes on the top, it only punches holes on the bottom. When I splice negative, I only put the tape on the side of the base that's shiny, the shiny side. So you put it on the pins and you lower these holding arms that have a little piece of cork on it. And then you can cut the end off using the guillotine cutter. I usually put my finger here because this will stick out. It, it bends up and then it isn't cut clean so you have to put a finger there and I can't do it holding the camera. But you want the end of the film to be cut off cleanly and it cuts through the middle of a sprocket hole. That's moved over to the center and then I cut the end of the other piece off and butt it against this one and put the tape on. It's enough to hold the film with one piece if you put your finger there and hold the film. Then it cuts it clean. Then you turn it around and tape it on. And you bring this down. I might have to bang that two or three times. This one isn't aligned absolutely perfectly and it's not so sharp. But I get it to work. Because I have viewed this negative inverted and printed once, I can find the scenes that I know I want to remove by simply passing this over a piece of white paper and rolling it by. I don't need to have a viewer. Now here's the plant. I'm going to remove the plant. That's the left view and there's the plant. So I'm going to remove the two plant shots because my theme is houses with the trees in the neighborhood. The plant shots are a little bit too light and don't have any blacks in them quality of the negative isn't the same. So it may need a different kind of light setting in order to print it to look good. So the head shot and the two plant shots were removed. The fuzz plant shot was thrown away and the uh, cactus shot which was too light was saved and the head shot that was too dark was saved for other printing experiments. So right now we have shot one looking left off the back porch connecting with 
of a house on a corner and they look pretty much the same. They both have white and black in them. So they're being spliced together. But what I wanted to show was to pick up the tape I use scissors like this and I press the tape against the scissors and I lift it and I bring it over. This is the shot in the backyard looking at the bushes that I added one uh, stop of exposure to because I was pointing it down. But this is the shot in the front street that had the sun behind the houses and it bled through and it's overexposed. So that's being thrown away. I can't save that one. You could see the difference on the other end from the overexposed street shot to a properly exposed house shot. So I think that's it. The two plant shots, the head shot, the slate, and the street shot. That's five. Five from fourteen is nine, so I've got nine shots. So what I'll do, since the base side is up, that's the shiny side, I want it to go through the printer this way, so I have to wind it up on this left reel. And I have leader all ready for the printer. So two volts was too much. So I have to untape the dial. There's not much light in here, so it's pretty dim. And what I'm going to do is lower the Less than two, one and three quarters, and then I will develop it less also. The film that remains on here is only two and a half feet long, so it's just long enough for a test, uh, which I probably should have done in the first place. But I'll do it now just to use this up. Then. I will use a new roll of Sonic 25 to print the whole thing if the test turns out right. Otherwise I have to make another test. So since it's only a test it will be developed in this can. So the negative is loaded on a take up reel. The raw print film is here. I'll take it out and I'll put it in the gate onto the sprocket wheel and I'll hold it. I'll hold the end of it. Then I'll lower the pressure plate and lock the little wheel against the, the sprocket pins and I'll pull that print up as the film advances that way. Then I'll go ahead and put it onto the developing reel, put it in the can and then I could turn the light on. While the film is fixing I'll tell you how I developed it. Two, three, Four, five. I used a 9 one shot, 4 milliliters and 300 milliliters of filtered water at 62 degrees going in. Four minutes after the last agitation, I dumped it out. Then it was like 4 minutes and 12 seconds or something that I turned off the stopwatch. That was three minutes. It had been pre-soaked. I didn't uh, measure the time. It wasn't very long, but it was pre-soaked. And when I checked the printer for the light level, it was a little lower than one and three quarters. It, was, it might have been one and a half. I'll have to check it again. So here are the two prints of the same shot at the end of the roll. The one on the right was printed at one and three quarter volts, the one on the left two volts. The one on the right and the, the one on the left were both developed four milliliters and three hundred. But the one on the right was dumped at four minutes and the one on the left at four and three quarter minutes. So somewhere in between the two should work out just right using the one and three quarter volts. This darker test was developed at 64 degrees. The mistake I made in the little test 
was that I used 62 degrees instead of 64. The test was way too light. So this time the full print was made at 63 degrees and it's much darker. But it's lighter than the first time. Cine Kodak Model BB Print 2 after a test that was too light. So this was developed at uh, 63 degrees. R09 one shot commercial developer was used. 4 milliliters to 300 and I used 2100 milliliters so I used 28 milliliters total and it was developed 4 minutes and 15 seconds then it was dumped out and by the time I clicked the stopwatch it was 5 minutes